Okay, so welcome everybody. Kitzur Shachnar class, the bridge bridge code of Jewish law, chapter twenty nine, Simon Chavtes, Midas Yagul Behem Adam Es Atzmoi. So Midas, um, often they character they translate as character traits, but it means like moral, uh, character development, um, self improvement, or all of these ideas, things that a person should uh adopt or habituate themselves in so good habits so although one of the foundations of judaism is that person should be sincere right it's uh my parents so uh, i was gonna say wedding video it was originally a film but they put on a video so before it got to the part of the speech it said um be sincere whether you mean it or not right so we uh judaism is about being for real so although we don't need to be for real, there is a certain aspect of fake it till you make it. So this is a very simple example. So let's say we did not yet achieve the level of Havas Yisrael, of love for our fellow Jew as we should. And inside, we're not feeling that positive feeling. We are capable, Baruch Hashem, at least we could smile, we can be polite, we can put on a we can we can act as if we have reached the level. Now, not that we should be fake and be fakers and 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 act like one person uh, to a person in a fake way while we're feeling something inside. But if we know it's the right thing to do, then sometimes we we get ourselves, you know, uh, a person might be feeling in a bad mood. They woke up one morning or they got problems, God forbid, and they're not feeling in such a good mood. You can still force yourself to say good morning to people and smile as you see them, even though no, even though that's that cheery countenance is not the real you at the moment. But you know that's the right thing to do. The right thing is to try and be uh, nice and friendly and uh, and to try and greet others. And so sometimes midas these character traits, these moral and, and ethical conduct. Uh, sometimes it's a matter of, of habituating ourselves. We make something our, our second nature, right? We make something our second nature, you know, uh, not to do with this topic, but in general, there's some people who, if you, you get up at the same time, often enough, you know, you set your alarm every single morning. So many people just start waking up at that time. That's the time they wake up. And so you, you've created a second nature. You weren't born with it. So there's a lot of positive and good things that we can that we can start doing and we can work on our souls and we get our souls into good healthy habits and then eventually becomes a second nature, becomes who we are. So some of these things to work on and some of these things are again I don't know if fake it till you make it's the right way to word it. But even if we're not yet there for real, but we want to be there for real. What makes it not hypocritical? is uh, a hypocrite to someone who uh, they say hello and they're planning to stab them in the back. But if someone's not feeling good feelings for someone, but they know that they should, it wasn't a person's fault that they messed up that time. And it's a problem with me that I'm holding a grudge. And uh, when, it, when you know, the situation doesn't warrant anything. And so, and I should be nice to them. So when a person is externally being friendly, even though they're not feeling it, that's not hypocritical. That's an expression of where you want to be. It's what you want to achieve. So it's actually your real self. You know, uh, although uh, clothes don't make someone that more from or more religious or less religious, you know, it doesn't make you more spiritual, less spiritual. But there's a story, there's a story that was a, uh, a chassid, he went to his, he, he, so in those days in Europe, often they all wore long coats during the week also. And, uh, but he was involved in certain business activities. And in his business activities, he wore a, a short, regular suit. That was better for his business. But when he went to his rabbi, he put on the chassidic clothes. And then uh, one time he thought, thought to himself, why am I being a hypocrite? And he came in his uh, his more sort of short modern suit. So that I've asked him how come. He explained that he uh, he he didn't want to be a hypocrite. He wanted to come as he is. 
So the Rebbe says to him, you know, till now, I thought the guy dressed up the chassid was the real you. And you just put on the suit for business. Right? Not that the guy in the, the modern guy was the real you and you put on the, the, the chassidic clothes. Again, not the clothes really makes you or doesn't make you. But it, it, the story illustrates the point. So even if we're not there, but we want to be there. So it's also for real to a certain extent. So with that in mind, let's get See, into up. Uh, yes. The Chovos HaLavavos says, HaTenua HaChitzona Meoreres as Hapanimius. We all right. like to say that, you know, I'm thinking about it, and when I really feel it, I'll exhibit it. They're saying no. You, the way you are projecting yourself is showing, is going to change your inside. You want to take on a level of chasidus? Take it on first and you'll grow into it. Don't think you're being a phony. Gewalt, you should be a phony that way. As long as the intent is pure. We're not talking about putting on a dress so that you can look like it. We're talking about I want to be there, but I don't feel comfortable yet with this extra. They're telling you, do that first, and that will change you to get into it. That's right. So just for the benefit of those whose who's Hebrew is, is uh, not as strong, the, 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 the phrase that he quoted in the beginning was that, I guess, what we do externally has an effect on who we are on the inside. Eventually, it arouses something within us. You know, if we if we do the right thing, it has an effect. You know, and this is this is uh, we've shared this before. We say that there's there's three things that affect everybody. Three things that affect everybody. Everyone has different tolerance levels, but no matter who you are, if you have enough, you get affected. So the first one is alcohol. Some people a little sip and they're gone. Some people drink the whole bottle, nothing happened. But no matter who you are, you drink enough, it affects you. Second one, they say, is money. Some people get a few dollars, they become a snob. Some people are multimillionaires and they're still the guy next door. But no matter who you are, if you get enough, it uh, changes you. And the third one is Tyra. Some people hear one, one idea and it changes their entire life. Some people learn in yeshiva for years and they're, and they're still the same... Uh, uncouth, uh, unrefined, whatever they were before. But no matter who you are, if you're exposed to enough and you take it enough, it changes you, has an effect on you. So the uh, the first step to being cured of, of an illness is to know that one has the illness, right? And if it's not diagnosed, don't know what it is, then you can't even address it. The second step is to know, okay, what I'm going to do for the cure. And the third step it's taken and it takes time. So if a person realizes that there's something that they have to work on themselves, they have to develop themselves, they have to they have to refine themselves, that's the first step they realize. And then they understand that there's a, a, a course of action that needs to be uh, undertaken. It could take years, you know, to, to really improve themselves to a certain extent and uh, all the way that they need to. But we begin. And knowing to begin, that desire... To a change, achieve a level that makes it, you know, because the Yetzirah's uh, famous, the Yetzirah's uh, biggest ploy is to tell you whatever you do is useless. So in this case, oh, you're a hypocrite, you know, or it's not any good anyway. You didn't really mean it. No, so that's how to go. So anyway, Aleph. Anoshim chalukim hein badayosam. People have different characteristics, different traits. We're all different. Now, this is actually a very positive thing we have to understand because no one is born by accident. Everyone who is born is born for a purpose. Hashem has something that wants done in this world, and Hashem chooses the best soul to undertake that mission. Now, even though there might be someone's soul who's greater than yours or mine, you know, and they become a rabbi, whatever it is, and they're a world leader, and so in a certain respect, obviously, they're greater than us. But when it comes to do our job that we were born for, we're greater than them. And the proof is, if they could have done a better job of what we're born here for, they would have been born to do it and not us. 
Vashem chose us to do this specific whatever we have to do, then we are the number one. We are the ones who can who can achieve it the best, and we are the ones who are here to do it. Right? And uh, a soul that's never been to this world is trained for up to three years before it comes to this world. A soul that's been here already in a previous incarnation, and it's pretty much everyone nowadays trains up to one year for their for their mission, and then our body is designed as a machine for 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 what for what for what we need to do to uh, to for our job. Some people have to be physically strong. Some people have to be musical. Another person has to have what what we'll call a disability, another person has to have whatever it is, whatever we're here for, our body is created with the ability to do it. And then we have the ultimate potential to achieve what no one else can. And why are we all different? Because we all have a different role. Right? If everyone had to just do the same thing, we'd just be clones. And everyone would be exactly the same and we'll go do the same thing. But then <laughs> we don't need all of us, just have one. Right, where everyone has a different role, and therefore we are different. And we have different lives, we're born in different families, in different places in the world, with different backgrounds. And uh, you know, sometimes people who who discover Judaism or discover what Judaism really is, they might not know Jewish, discover what Judaism really is as an adult, and sometimes late in adulthood, you know, they say, you know, well. Uh, why wasn't I born into a family that taught me this when I was a kid? You know, why Why did I have to have the situation I had? And uh, to answer specifically, I can't say. You have to see the person's soul and, and, and know what it is. But in general, though, because for whatever role you have, you have to have that background. And I had a student many years ago, over 20 years ago, came to our yeshiva. You know, he Beforehand, he He'd he'd been a drug addict. And he'd been a drug addict. He got this uh, from 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 home, but unfortunately, uh, you know, didn't have the greatest of uh, lives. It wasn't it wasn't his family was bad. or sometimes like dysfunctional family can be the cause of these things. But he had, he had different things happen in his life, and uh, he wasn't totally recovered when he came to us. He had some ups and downs, but he re he recovered more Hashem. And uh, after school, he went to, you know, after it was a high school, Yeshiva high school, but he went to Yeshiva for a year or so. And then he went and he studied and he became a drug counselor. And he was tremendously successful. And he always felt, you know, as bad as my life was in those years, but because of that, I can help all these people because I can relate to them. I un they know I understand them, right? They go to other people. And they feel, yeah, they're telling me this, they're telling me that, but they don't understand me. They don't know what I'm going through. But they feel that he knows what he went through. So here he had all these terrible uh, few years. And you could say, why Why should someone go through so much uh, suffering? so terrible. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, mate, I'm not going to try and speak for Hashem, why Hashem did it this way, not that way. But the bottom line is, we see from all this experience, and from this background, he was able to help many, many people. I don't know how many numbers of the years he's had many, many, you know, it's uh, that someone else couldn't have helped. So we all, it's there's a reason. But anyway, so we're all different. There are some people who by nature, they're born angry, like bursting with rage. Now, by the way, it's a long chapter, so we're not going through it today. I just want to make clear, we're not. This is not fatalism. We're not saying, you know, uh, like in the modern world today. The modern world today is people can do all kinds of uh, immoral and, and reprehensible things, and they turn around and say, "It's not my fault. I, I was born that way. It's my it's my nature, right?" And uh, and some things at the moment society accepts that some things you know if they shot five people society is not yet accepting it but i wouldn't be surprised and it's not going to take long in some places and uh you know god forbid if we have if we are tyra certainly accepts that some people are born with unhealthy tendencies however 
the purpose of that is to fix it. You know, if we look at, for example, why do we have the mitzvah tzedakah? Right? Why does Hashem make someone lacking something? Okay, tzedakah, by the way, is not only money. It can be time, it can be expertise, it can be care, but whatever it is, why would someone be lacking and someone have extra? It looks like, if we don't understand the context, it looks like Chas Hashem messed up. Chas Hashem, I feel funny saying it, but it's, you know, that's what it could look like to someone. But the answer is, Hashem has given us the privilege of being Hashem's partner in creation. The world is almost complete, there's a certain imperfection, and we are given the opportunity to repair, to perfect that imperfection, and doing that, we become a partner in the entire creative process. It's a privilege, it's a merit, it's, it's a kindness that Hashem gave us. So sometimes, you know, we can be born with a ne negative character trait for a variety of reasons. Every person could be a different reason. But generally speaking, we have the obligation then to, to fix it. That's what we need to work on. And some people by nature, they're very calm and they never get angry. Or he gets angry once in many years, several years, once in a blue moon. There's some people who are extremely haughty by nature. They're conceited by nature. There's those who are very humble. And we shouldn't confuse. Most of the people who act very conceited, by the way, are usually insecure. They actually yeah. are not insecure. full of themselves. Because, because of the insecurities, they try to compensate. But, but you have people. So you have a question? Yeshua oh, okay. Baltaiva, the those who are full of lusts for all kinds of materialism. And you can never satisfy them. They can never satisfy themselves. There's some people who, you know, literally uh, pure of heart, but in other words, they're very genuine, altruistic. So they, they don't even desire for, for the basics that the body needs to sustain it. So, Yeshbal Nefesh or Chaba, those who who uh, require they 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 want wealth. And all the money in the world won't satisfy them. Oh, they made one billion, they need two billion. Some people are very proud that they're so humble. Yes. Kin Yishama says, Ayev Kesef is my Kesef. This someone who desires money, money won't satisfy him. And then there's some people who they don't even make the an effort. They don't have any drive. They don't make the effort to support themselves, which isn't healthy either. They don't chase after what they need, just to to for their for their requirements. Okay, I'm not talking about a person has to work 100 hours a week so they can have a holiday house and a boat and, a, and 16 cars. Right? But some people don't even do the basic. Those people who afflict them themselves with hunger and they they acquire money. They're like a Scrooge. You know, they're tight-fisted. They won't even look after themselves. Marshal Eichel Mishaloi and when they eat their own food, it pains them. Right? And not only food, but you know, if they have to spend a dollar of their own money, they feel and there's people who waste all their money. They just you know splurge. The same call midas vadeus. This applies to all character traits, to all mindsets. You have extremes and you have everything in between. Kagoin, Mahilo Vainan, your people are cheerful and those who are depressed. Kilai Bashaya, you have the miser, noble heart, Achza Rachmani, you have someone who's cruel and someone who's compassionate, Rachlebov, Amitzlebov, you have someone who's gentle and you have someone who's hard heart, the case of him and the like.
all character traits. You can have the extremes and everything in between. So that's the introduction. Base. And people are born that way. Right? There's some people who acquire this this way of thinking. Some people are educated in the way of thinking. But some people are born natural tendencies. You know, we if we if we look at it healthily, you know, we look at a child, small child cries over things, they have they have tantrums. And uh, the point is to educate the child over the years to to be able to put things into perspective, to be able to, if they need something, to ask in the appropriate way. You know, it's, uh, all these things have to be worked on. Base number two. Hadara Hatoiva Yoshihu. Now, the straight, good, and correct path, Shagla Adamis Atzmoi, that a person should habituate himself in, is Lech Zderachim Soi. Middle of the road. Now, we're going to give some exceptions to this. So, for example, we're going to say things like rage and, and conceitedness. Even the middle of the road is not good. But overall majority of things. So let's, let's talk about someone, for example, someone who's a, who just wastes their money as opposed to someone who hurts him to spend a penny. Middle of the road. That's 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 better. We should only want the things that the body needs. You shall lich yois the last time you can't live without them. Can you remember it says? Tzadik oichel so nafshoi. A tzadik should eat. The righteous person eats to satisfy his soul. Righteous person doesn't eat just to, to you know. Oh, there's a, you know, all you can eat for nine ninety nine. Let's just let's put him out of business, right? That's that's, that's not why tzadik eats. Tzadik eats to uh to 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 exist to live. And also, when a person invests their time into their work, you put in the time that, that is truly required. In other words, you have certain responsibilities, you need enough to make a livelihood, but a person doesn't have to make it their entire life. Kinshema says, A little bit is good for the tzaddik. Right, put, a person should be overly like tight-fisted. Also, he shouldn't be throwing his money around. Rather, a person should give tzedakah according to his financial situation. Although it might be a very nice thought to say, oh, someone needs, I'll give everything. Yeah, but then the person who gave is on the street. You have to you have to be generous, but within your within your means. A malva karoi lefi the sorich, and a person when they when they they should they should um, lend wisely to people who need it. Lo yam a hollow of a soichik, you shouldn't be too happy. I mean, normally it's not a problem feeling happy, but normally it's not going to be too, you know, like headed and jolly. You know, the person. Also, a person should be gloomy and depressed. You've got to be uh, like an in-between. Rather, a person should be happy at all times, contented, and he should show a friendly face. And the same applies to the majority of the middas. We'll loosely translate middas as character traits. Someone who goes the middle of the road that person is called a chokum, a wise person. Okay, and uh, the next two, we're going to speak about character traits that there's not a middle of the road. We need to avoid them. But I'm also going to just uh, mention, you know, the same time we're talking about, if we use driving as an example, you want to be in the middle of the road. Well, I guess technically in the middle of the road, middle of your lane, whatever, whatever happens to be. If for some reason a person veered all the way to the left, so he has to temporarily turn the wheel all the way to the right to get back to the middle. Right? So there are times in a person's life, and sometimes in Jewish history, the community, they have to overly emphasize something to correct the fault. Right? So they have to overly emphasize something to correct the fault. But it's temporary. Just to get back to the middle of the road. Yes, David. When a person is growing a twig, 
and the, twi the twig is growing like this, like crooked, it's not enough just to straighten the twig. You have to uh, uh, overcompensate by putting the twig going this way so it'll grow straight. Okay, yeah, that's a very good example. Thank you. So this 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 idea, so, uh, you know, there might be a person... Whatever they realize that they've they've let an aspect of themselves get out of control, they have a certain unhealthy tendency. So sometimes they have to overcompensate until you get back to to where it should be. So this is what we say from majority. Overall majority of character traits, that's the way to do it. And that's called being a chokham, a wise person. Gimbal, number three. Hagaiva himidis ram oid. Now Gaiva we're going to translate his conceit, but I want to I want to just discuss it for a few minutes. Having a healthy self esteem is good, right? Believing in yourself, having confidence, we're talking about being humble, doesn't mean that you can't believe in yourself. You know, it says that Moses, you know, Moshe Ben was the most humble man that ever lived. Now he certainly asserted his authority as a leader at times. He stood up for what he believed was correct. He took action. He wasn't a doormat. So on the surface, he didn't look very humble. He seemed to be someone who, uh, who you know, knew his abilities, knew his strengths, and he acted accordingly. So what made him so humble? What made him so humble is that he felt, although he's the greatest prophet who ever lived and ever will live, because the Torah came through him, and there'll never be a higher prophecy than that. He was aware of that. But he felt to himself, how did I get this high level? Because Hashem gave it to me as a gift. I didn't deserve it. That's what he felt. Now, obviously, he did deserve it. Otherwise, Hashem would have given it to someone else or someone else deserved it. Obviously, he deserved it. But that was his humility. He felt it wasn't something I deserved. It wasn't something I earned. Hashem gave it to me. And if Hashem would have given it to someone else, they would have done a better job than me. That was what made him... But nevertheless, he realized he had this ability and the strength and therefore the responsibility that came with that. And therefore, he, he, he carried out that responsibility. So that's having healthy self-esteem. You know, we, we speak about, you know, Shavuos is coming up. And we often talk about the Midrash that um, the mountains argue with each other. They said the Torah should be given on me. Now, just side point on the side point, we're not talking about the physical mountains here. Right. If you if you go out to the mountains and you hear them talking to you, speak to me after class. Uh, you know we'll we'll work on that. But what it means is, we know everything in this world, everything in existence has a soul. Not a soul like inanimate objects don't have a soul like a person. You know, in English we're limited. There's only one word for soul. In in Moshe Kodesh in in the in Hebrew the language of creation we have many words for soul. And uh, the term that's used in inanimate objects is normally translated as a spark. It's like a spark of godliness, right? Everything has something godly in it. It's it, the creative spiritual energy that keeps it in existence. That's its soul. So the spiritual aspects were arguing, the souls. One said, Tosh, we give me, I'm a huge mountain. No one gave all the reasons. And we see that Mount Sinai was, was the most humble, I'm only small, I'm not a pretty mountain, I'm very rocky and plain, I don't deserve it. And Hashem gave, chose Hasinai because it was humble. Okay, good. Leads to the obvious question. If you want to show humility, give the Torah in a valley. Why a mountain at all? Small mountain, how's that? It's still a mountain. right? Because the reality is, to be a Jew, and in particular, and just to fulfill your role as a moral, ethical human being in general, and to do what you created, you have to be a mountain. There are times you have to stand up for what you believe in, you have to think, say, and act in a way that's perhaps contrary to popular uh, opinion, especially in the modern Western world. A person, to and, and we have to overcome a Yetzirah, so to be a successful Jew, you have to be a mountain. But be a small man. Don't get carried away with yourself. So Gaiva, it's not someone who believes in themselves. We're meant to believe in ourselves. We're meant to have confidence. 
we're meant to take steps and not be too shy all right but we can't get carried away with ourselves we shouldn't think we're something that we're not or or think we're so great because we do what we're meant to do you know it's like a, a small child so he uh, he finishes eating, takes his his plate to the sink. So you you make a big deal. That's wonderful, you know. Well, good, great job because you want to encourage him. But at the end of the day, you know, an adult. I mean, you might say thank you, but an adult, you don't make such a big deal. Why? Because he did what he's meant to be doing. Cleaned up after himself. That's called human decency. So the fact that a person works on themselves spiritually does not mean they should think now that oh I'm the I'm the best I'm the best thing since sliced bread. Right? That's what you're here for. So we need to have a, a healthy self esteem. We need to be a mountain, but a small mountain. So Gaiva, Gaiva which is conceit, it's 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 a it's not realistic. It's it's taking someone out of their their context. You know, they, they think there's something that they're not, or they think they deserve a credit that they really don't deserve. It's 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 it's, it's artificial. That is the midrama oi. This is a very bad caricature, very negative. It's only going to cause problems. And a person shouldn't have this even a little bit. Everything else in the middle of the road, this you don't even have middle of the road. You go the other extreme, person should habituate themselves to be humble. Again, humble doesn't mean being a doormat. Moshe was the most humble man ever lived. He was certainly no doormat. As our sages commanded us, be very, very humble. Now, the eight targets at some holiday is on the shuffle rock. Now, it's not yet, yeah, David. Um, a rabbi, I think it was Rab Nachman of Braslov, said from Gaiva. So you broke off. Is that from Gaiva? What from Gaiva comes Gaiva? Yep, I yeah, think there's other comes background. Time, this comes desire. If you feel you, there's other so background. On, so on. Yeah. Someone who's humble, someone who's humble feels that Hashem's given them whatever they need. Someone has a uh, unrealistic sense of, sense of themselves feels they're entitled to more and more and more, and therefore becomes uh, desires on lust for materialism, and uh, often negatively. There's a great mimer that we had learned uh, with uh, Rabbi Rice. And he, it was from the Friedrich Rebbe, and he said that a person uh, has gaiva, he has pride, or uh, he he wants everything, and he feels like the other guy doesn't deserve any, anything. And what the other guy wants, he wants. And he, he's not only happy with what he has, he wants everything, because the other guy doesn't deserve anything. So from the gaiva comes the taiva. Yep. Rabbi? Yes. The Chinese have a saying, have nothing and be happy. <laughs> Klaus Schwab says so too. Well, we have Perky Obvious, right? It says, uh, who's a rich man? One is satisfied with what he has. By the way, that's only talking about physical things. Spirituality, we should never be satisfied. He says, the, Chinese, so, the Chinese got their, got their Torah from Mount Sinai. Could be. The reality is, you know, I mean, we don't want to get too sidetracked, but we know that Avraham Avinu, he had quite a few sons. So he gave Ishmael certain inheritance, but he gave uh, pretty much everything to Yitzchak. And his his other sons, he gave them gifts, certain knowledge and spiritual insights, and he sent them to the East. And this is why you find that, that Eastern religions often have far more in common with uh, Judaism than uh, than Christianity, now, people seem to think oh Christianity is almost the same. You know, it's it's totally warped. It's got really very little. You know, Judaism has far more in common with Buddhism than it does with Christianity. 
and I'm not saying that has all that much in common with Buddhism either, but 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 on on outlook, world outlook is you know far more in common. A friend of mine, even though yeah. externally they're walking around in sheets and sitting on the floor, and and the church and them might have the same uh, setup, might look like a synagogue, you know, but but that's just external. Yeah, so Dov, you want to say something? Yeah, a friend of mine uh, is an acupuncturist. I was also, but he spoke to Rabbi, one of the Rabbi Soloveitchik's, and he said that uh, everything is supposed to have a source in Torah. What's the source in uh, What's the source uh, in Torah for acupuncture? So he explained that uh, acupuncture was a was a healing that was given from Avraham to his sons who went eastward towards China, towards China, and uh, they they have. Um, these ancient texts that talk about the application of a pointed object like a stone or a piece of wood to a per certain point in order to clean to, to cure certain uh, diseases. It's and, and this isn't a medrash. He said that then this is how the Chinese got um, acupuncture. Yeah. This was. This, uh... And, and either it came directly that way, or even could be wisdom from Noach that went to all the all the things. But it, but it's from source Torah is aware of these things, you know. But it's good acupuncturist. He he got the point. Yeah, because it says because it says in the Excuse Torah the that uh, that Avram sent his children eastward to the east, like as yeah. far east as you go, which is China. Yeah, and everywhere on the way. Right, like India. So. So how does a person habituate himself to be humble? So it says, Kol So this is what we're talking about, by the way, fake it till you make it. You have someone that he's not very humble at the moment. He's, he know he recognizes he has this character flaw. And he's working on himself. Now again, it's not hypocrisy because he's trying to do what he truly wants. He wants to correct his character flaw. So what does he do? The first thing is all these words should be spoken gently, calmly. Rosh Chakafov, he's holding the head down, doesn't mean you have to walk down, you know. Uh, he says, Natalie, you're a bit to the mouth, you look down. That doesn't mean that now you see you walk into the street pole because you're not watching where you're going. But a person, body language, right? There's a certain body language. Someone thinks they're better than you or they they're trying to lord over you there's a certain body language so we work on body language right and this is what i was, was saying in the introduction of you know it's uh you can feel one thing inside and be doing something out, outside it's to change you it's not being it's not being fake the hypocrite the fake one is the one who's being nice to you while they're planning to stab you in the back that's the fake Someone working on something that they know to be correct until it becomes tr who they truly are, that's not hypocritical. That's a, it's a process to get there. You know, it's like the guy, no, I'm, I, I'm not going to study brain surgery because uh, to, to do the first day without knowing the whole thing, that's being a hip, I'm being a fake. I don't know the whole thing. So, you know, so we just do brain surgery cold, you know, not studying, you know, because that way it's not being hypocrite. You know, it's obviously it's ridiculous. We have to do things step by step. But limchala and a person should focus their heart towards above. They have to realize the source, everything comes from Hashem. The Khal Adam and he should consider every person important. He should work on himself that he feels that every person is important. So God of And everyone and everyone's greater than you. Now that doesn't mean you start feeling you're a nothing. But as we discussed before, everyone is here for a specific purpose. No one's born by accident. And because everyone's here for a specific purpose, for their purpose, they are the greatest. So everyone in the world has something unique and greater than me. Now, I might also have something unique and greater than them. But if you can appreciate that uniqueness in the person, and the greatness that they have, and you focus on it, that's going to stop this feeling of, you know, I'm superior and they're nothing. Now, 
so you think how they grade them? Maybe he's more learned than me. Now I have to show respect. I have to honor him. Maybe he's richer than me. And also I have to give him a certain respect. Not that we doesn't say that means you sack up to money just person just because they have money. What we mean though is if a person the Shem gives this person the the resources, it means they have the potential to do good things with it. So we, we show uh, a certain respect for that. Providing they do the right the Sino Rabbi and Mechabad Hashirim, as we see that Rabbi Hilda Nossi, he used to he used to give us honor to wealth people. Because he, he used to feel he since Hashem gave that person um wealth, therefore he is deserving, at least in potential. Right? We know just when we're talking about potential, okay. I'm, again, I'm gonna give a very um extreme example. And I God forbid, I don't want anyone to feel that I'm I'm praising a a very evil or sick and sane person. I just want to I'm not trying to be controversial. I just want to give an extreme example just to illustrate the point. Right? Hitler Yimachimoy was a very talented individual. Right? He was someone he took a bankrupt country and he almost conquered the world. He had a ability to inspire people. He had an ability to find the right person for the right job, or maybe it's called the wrong person or the wrong job. But, you know, he, in a certain way, was gifted. The problem is he used it for evil. Can you imagine if he took those same gifts and instead of doing the evil that he did, let's say he said, we're going to try and conquer poverty in the third world. Now, maybe it's harder to get people on board for that. It's easy to get people on board for, for hate sometimes. But so maybe it wouldn't have conquered the whole world almost. But even if he achieved 10%, imagine he decided we're going to build hospitals. We're going to, we're going to try and find the cure for diseases. And he used that same talent, that same charisma to inspire people, to get people on board, making, inventing youth groups and getting people inspired and finding the right people for the right job. Imagine what he could accomplish for the good. And when, when his soul left this world, as much as whatever it got for all that he did, I would imagine almost as great as that was the waste of potential. I'm sure when they, now when his soul was in the world, the truth, and he saw how wrong everything was, I mean, he may have been insane enough to believe it was or whatever. And then he saw what he could have done with his potential. What a, how much is going to torment a person forever? So, and again, I, I'm not giving any praise, and I, I don't want it to be taken the wrong way, God forbid, but I'm using an extreme example. So the fact that a person is given, has, is, has wealth, now, unfortunately, some people take that wealth and they do all kinds of things, God forbid, that aren't positive. But they have the potential. And wealth is an example. Whatever other, sometimes physical strength, sometimes it's influence in other ways. When a person has that, uh, they have a tremendous potential. And sometimes by giving, perhaps honor isn't the best translation, but by showing that we appreciate that they have what they have, and we appreciate their ability to do something positive, and we, therefore, we that gives them encouragement to to do the right thing. That can be a tremendous power. The im who cotton mimcha b'chacham ba'ishan. So that's that's easier to do if the guy is a greater scholar than me, or he's wealthier than me, or he has something more than me. But what if he's smaller than me in everything? I'm more learned than him. I'm wealthier than him. I've got some stronger than him. You know whatever it is. So and Tachshav ki yoisat sadik mincha. So you should think maybe he's he's more spiritual than me. Maybe he's a bit sadik than me. Ki hu im oyva ezavera. Next I'll show you on this. And even if I know he does certain things wrong, I should think maybe it's not his fault. It's a circumstances or it's a mistake. 
v'ato im avato v'ayr at amazed. But when I did the same thing, I should realize, be honest with myself, you know, I, I didn't have to do it. You know, so these are the different ways that a person can think about, appreciate someone. In Kaitasha, Talmud, if a person is going to think along these ways all the time, he's never going to become arrogant. He's never going to feel that he's superior to others. And that'll be good for him. So, again, just to sort of sum this up, there's nothing wrong with realizing that I have an ability that no one else has. And that when the time comes to step forward, I'm the one that needs to step forward. That's not arrogance. That's, that's, that, well, it can be arrogance and gaiva if it's not real. But if the circumstances really are that way, that's not arrogance. That is having a realistic, healthy self-esteem, which a person needs to be able to accomplish. And uh, we're working ourselves, sorry, obviously, one second, so just, so that's how we need to look at it. And we also have to realize that everybody else is in that boat as well. They all have something. They have something unique and every person has their moment. And you never know who and when. And it's, uh, it's, it's very important. Yes, David. There is a idea of a person who's rich, <clears throat> excuse me, person is rich. Some people give him extra honor. So there was a story once that happened with, uh, I forget which Rebbe this was. And uh, uh, people were waiting for an audience for Yechidus. And a rich man walked in and the Rebbe gave him extra time. So some of the people that were waiting in line to see the Rebbe were upset because they felt that the Rebbe was giving him more uh, time because he was rich. So someone asked the uh, the Gabai, the, uh, the Rebbe's assistant, uh, what's going on? So it came out later that the, the, the Rebbe, he asked the Rebbe, and the Rebbe said, this rich guy took a lot more time to beat around the bush until he got to the point. Every, everybody else walked in and told me their problem. But it took him about 10 or 15 minutes until he got around and around and around until he finally told the Rebbe his problem. So it wasn't that I was giving him more, more honor. I just gave him enough time to tell me what he needed, the same as everybody else. But it took him a lot longer because of his wealth to come to the point. Yeah. Right. So, so again, just want to emphasize when we talk about gaiva and the negativity of gaiva and and the positivity of being humble. Being humble means having a healthy self esteem. That is being humble. Being a doormat is not humble. That's it's falsehood. Right. So, for example, you know, let's say, uh, oh, I just. Simple examples. You know, someone is asked to be chazan. So look, being chazan is certainly not for everyone. But if someone has a pleasant voice and you could do a nice job, and it, but he's trying to be, say, no, I can't do it because I'm no good, I'm no whatever, that's 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 not humility. That's a lie. And it's false. It's false humility. And and it and that it, uh, it wastes one potential. Now, to have the other extreme, where the guy is running to try and be the chazan every five seconds because he wants everyone to compliment him and say what a good voice you have and and uh, and to be the center of attention, so that's not healthy either. Right? That's to be that, that has to be a a a record. Okay. And again, there's nothing wrong with the compliment, right? And we all appreciate a bit of a compliment and a and a, and a, a little uh, uh, encouragement once in a while as well, but. What's the motivation? What's the motivation? So uh, that's what we have to try and, and rid ourselves of is uh, the gaiva and stay with a a healthy self esteem and a and a healthy respect for everyone else. Dalit number four, the chena kas, likewise anger. Now. Kas, I'm going to say, is is stronger than this regular anger. Kas is a is is 
or rage maybe is too strong a word also. What we're talking about, you know, there can be something, there can be a situation where someone does something very wrong. I mean, let's talk about, you know, October 7, that obviously arouses in a person uh, a certain anger that's appropriate. And, and there's actions that have to be carried out to um, ensure that things can't happen again and to bring a certain justice. Cast is when a person is blinded by the anger. This is why I would say it sort of rages in a certain respect, the better translation. They're blinded by the anger and they can't think logically. They can't think clearly. That's what cast is. To a person to be annoyed by something, but to, to something's wrong, that that you can be morally outraged by certain things that might technically be called anger. But as long as a person is able to deal with it, and so was once again, I, I know sometimes as a parent, there's been times and a teacher of kids, something happened in a in a class or, or at home, the kids did something, and you know that you actually are angry. So sometimes it's better rather than dealing with it now while you're angry, you know, you say this was this was highly inappropriate. Okay, we're gonna deal with this later. And you need to calm down yourself. And then go and deal with it logically. Because when when a person uh, is is not in the right headspace, can be dealt with out of proportion. And that's what cast is. Cast and the cast also comes from Gaiva. Because why does a person get cast? Because you to me, you know, generally good teachers in school, they don't they don't get they might fake anger at times, but they don't really get angry. Why? Because they don't take it personally. When the kid spoke in class, it wasn't to get you. Right? You didn't step the whole night before and said, Let's see, how can I ruin the teacher's day? Right? You were thinking about himself. The next day he had something he wanted to say and he could he couldn't hold himself back. So you have to educate the person on how to uh, c develop their character traits and how to behave appropriately. So there might need to be a consequence or, or you know, something you have to do to educate the person. But it's, but it's not personal, so you shouldn't take it personally. Someone who takes everything personally and, and becomes enraged all the time, this person has a gaiva issue. Yeah, sorry, David. So was the word kas also mean pocket? That's a kiss. It's, it's, it's without the iron. It's, it's a, two letters the same. And the third letter in, in the, the words is different. But people do make a play on words. Right? Like certain people, uh, how do you see their true nature? They say in the kas, the kiss, and the kois. Right? The anger, until they get angry, when it comes to money issues, and uh, when they've had a drink. You know, you can see their true, uh, that's how you see someone's true nature in these three things. So, cast this, this, this rage, this uh, not being able to look at things objectively, it's a, it's a terrible middle. Rather, other misrach memenum oid, a person should distance himself. He should stay away from it as ultimate extreme. The Yagas Atzmoshli Kasafila Damashari And he should try and train himself not to get angry even about things that deserve anger. Vim Sarek Lahatl Aima Bonob Name Baso. Even if a person has to, uh, you know, put the fear of his authority to his household and his kids, you know, or as a teacher in a school or something, Yar Atzmif name Shulkois. He should he should put on he should put on a show. He should make it look like he's annoyed. To the Asram, this is to deter them so they'll they won't they'll go away from the from their negative behavior. They die to Mishavas Bain Alvin Atzmoy, but inside his his mind he should be he should be calm. He should be he should be focused. That's that's what he should do. Rabbi I'm like, yes. Um, well, that, um, that's an indication that really, uh, the proper attitude would not be to lose control, 
because if, if God forbid a person uh, really becomes coerced, if he's really angry and he loses control, that uh, that would mean a lack of logic and that would mean the overtaking of, of emotions by the mind. But I I read that Maimonides, Rabbi Moshe ben Maimon, uh, said that uh, anger was akin to a vote of Zora. Yep, it's uh, from the Talmud. It's, 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 it's right, because when a person, again, because wh wh why does a person become into a rage? Because it's it's, it's about me. I've been wronged. It's, it's me, 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 me. And that's 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 the source of Avodah of of everything that's not holiness. So, Amalai Eliyahu the Rav Yehuda, a Chudah Rav Sila Chasidah, Sila Chasidah. So Eliyahu, the prophet, he said to Rabbi Yehuda, the brother of Rav Silo, who was a very pious person, Don't, don't become enraged. Because becoming enraged leads to spiritual downfall, to hate. You know, often they trans trans translate the word hate as sin. It's a very Christian word. But, you know, it's a spiritual downfall. Right, and uh, don't don't become drunk because that'll also lead to spiritual downfall. And our sages also advise us; they tell us, "Whoever becomes enraged, over the way the zara. It's like he worshipped an idol." All mina gehenim shaltim by, and all forms of gehenim. Will be inflicted on him again, not as a punishment, as we explained. Gehenna is a cleanser, but when a person becomes enraged and loses control of himself and behaves in a way that he wouldn't or shouldn't if he was thinking rationally, then he needs a lot of cleaning. Shnama says, "Remove the anger from your heart, and that will remove the evil from your body." So by controlling one's cast, this uh, releases him from the from Gehenim. But in Ra El Gehenim, and in this context, Ra is referring to Gehenim. Shema says, "We're going Rasha Yom Ra." One says, uh, "Indeed, the wicked one for the day of evil." So Bali Kas Ein Chayim Chayim. People who who would get angry by everything, their life is not a life. They don't have a real life. The fichach civil is rachak minikas, and therefore we're commanded to stay far away from anger. Shinag atzmoish le yargish fil dvarim amachisim. We want to try and get to the point, conduct ourselves to the point that we don't even care about things that could be justifiable to have rage. What does that mean? Sorry? The day, the day of evil. What does that mean? That means, uh, it means gehen. Uh, this is the good path. It's the way of Siddikim. That they are, they, they'll suffer insult and they don't insult. Someone can, can abuse them and they don't respond. Now, sometimes a person has to defend themselves in a, in a justified and, and, and a calm way. But no, but not out of revenge or you said this to me, so I'm going to get you. They, they, whatever they, they, they're motivated by love, and they rejoice in, uh, in, in Yisurim, in, in, I don't want to say suffering is not the right word, but you know, uh, a person who, let's say for example, they have a, a chronic pain in their leg. Now, obviously, they're going to go to the doctor, they're going to try and fix it, and various things, but there's different ways they can look at it. One way they can look at it and say, why am I suffering? You know, why, why is Hashem punishing me? Why am why is all these bad things happening to me? Or a person can say, you know, I'm not lucky. I'm so privileged that, you know, I know I'm not perfect. I know that I need certain cleansing. And Hashem has given me the privilege that I'm having some pain in this world that's uh, cleaning me up and I can go to the next world clean. 
you know it's uh it, it's it's a whole different mindset doesn't mean you enjoy it doesn't mean you're not going to try and fix it and go to the doctor and get it but in the meantime how do you look at it what do they say you know a little bit of pain never hurt anyone anyway <laughs> so lame cost of aim but such a person the the verse says those who love Hashem, they're like the sun when it comes out in its might. That's how much they light up the world by dealing with things. You know, so a lot of these things, it's really about mindset. Okay, we've got a whole chapter. We're going to go through many more things. Any questions before we finish up? Right, okay, well, in that case, wish everyone... Yeah, Dov? Over a story um, a few days ago last week about uh, Rebelli Melch and Reb Zusha. So uh, in this story, uh, Rebelli Melch, um, Reb, the Reb Zusha had been getting beat up by the crowd in this uh, wedding, and they switched places. So then the crowd noticed, uh, they said, look, he's got a friend, and they went after Reb Zusha again, who was in the back. So, it, so the story says that uh, in truth, Rebelli Melch he was jealous of Rabbi Zusha because he would have liked to have gotten some of this beating, some of this bad stuff happening to him instead of Rabbi Zusha because the, the beating was, uh, he felt that that was like a, a cleansing of his sins. So yeah. this is similar to what you're saying, I think. Yep. If okay, I wish everyone a wonderful week. And we'll see you everyone next week, good morning. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.